what's going on guys it's your boy christian and welcome your faces back to another video now this is going to be episode number six of the beginner's guide and in this one we're actually going to be taking a look at the m s a and p buttons here on the top of the sony a7 II. so before we get started let me go ahead and drop a battery in here and we're also going to drop a lens on this bad baby basically um what we're going to be starting in first is m now m is going to be manual mode this is going to allow you to basically do just about anything so if you look on the back of the screen here somebody did suggest a very good comment i haven't gotten to doing it yet but there is a screen protector on here that comes from factory that i should be able to take off and put another one on so we don't have to look at this terrible screen on the Sony a7 II. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump into this. So as you can see, um, you see that we have our image on the opposite side and we also have, you know, all of our controls are in manual. So if we go ahead and roll this, we have this set to shutter speed. As you can see in the bottom left corner, that is changing my shutter speed. So that means in this case scenario, you're gonna have change shutter speed. And then in the front here, we should have aperture, which let me go ahead and turn my lens to manual, turn it to auto. If I had it set in an aperture, it was gonna be set in that aperture. So I'm gonna set it to A. And now we should be able to change that aperture with the front dial right here in the camera and this is full manual mode and usually i would suggest you need to learn this one before you learn all of the other ones but we're going to go over the other ones as well this is just the first one on the list is going to be manual mode because this is going to be the one that hopefully you spend 90 percent of the time shooting either photo or video in this mode so um, we already mapped iso to our scroll wheel and if you haven't and still have the uh, default setup you can just press ISO and then go through that setup as well so basically in manual you only have three different things that you're gonna be able to change you have your ISO you have your shutter speed and you have your aperture so depending on what you want to basically have so in this case scenario I want to have a shallow depth of fill that means I will have the camera set as it is now in f2.8 so it can give me the most blurriest background. Now, if I wanted the whole frame in focus or in, you know, you can see the whole frame, there is no shallow points, there is no blurry points, that F number needs to be higher, but you have to know when you have that F number at a higher number, you're gonna have to basically bring down the intensity of, you know, light. Well, no, bring up the intensity of light. Sorry, I had that you know, definitely backwards, but you want to bring up that intensity of light because the circle in the lens is going to be as small, small, small circle, and you're going to be able to get a lot in focus if you do it that way. So like I'm saying, in manual mode, you're going to be able to get the precise and basically whatever stylistic look that you're looking for in your photos and video. So remember, manual mode, which is what we're set in right now, and that's going to be the M. This is the M category. We're gonna be able to do shutter speed, which is gonna be this scroll wheel here on the back. Then we're gonna be able to do aperture, which is the front scroll wheel right there. And then ISO right here. So basically, um, like I was saying in that mode, you want to be able to use that mode predominantly the whole time. But let's go ahead and go over the other modes that will be here on your camera. So let's go ahead and jump into S. Now S is going to be shutter priority. Now in this case scenario, we are going to be able to dedicate everything else around the shutter. So if we have our shutter set at, let's say, right now it's at one over 116, well, well one over 1,600. So it's really, 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 really far up there. And if we're shooting that far or that high up on our shutter speed range, we're trying to capture something in motion. So this would be good for like sports photography and stuff like that. So you can capture your actual subjects 
in motion. Now, the reason we want to, you know, have shutter priority is for things just like that. So if you need something that's not going to be moving as fast, you can get out of shutter priority or just, you know, have a slower shutter and then everything else will have to be set manually around the shutter. So, so now we're going to go ahead and jump over into A. A is going to be aperture priority. So basically what this is going to do, as you can see, it looks very slow and it's telling me, it's telling the camera, it's changing the shutter speed based off of where I have my aperture set here. So basically with the aperture priority um, on this lens, I do have it in A, which means it's in auto mode. So if I change my aperture to eight, this is going to be the prioritized setting. So basically nothing is going to change on the camera. The shutter speed is going to basically give me a perceived, you know, equal meter or meter mode as a flat meter mode or whatever it's reading. And it's going to try to keep the F at a constant. So with this case scenario, what you would do with this is if you were taking, let's say like a group photo, you will want to have most of the people's faces in focus so you don't want a shallow depth of field because it's going to pick one face and actually focus on that one face so basically so if you wanted to do something like that we're going to just pop this bad baby down to f11 and i did it manually here and if i did it in auto remember we can use the front of our camera to actually change that in camera but i'm just going to move it here on the lens because this is going to be our constant so we have our aperture at 11. So that's going to make sure a lot of our field or our actual, you know, capture. Oh God, almost dropped her. This, you know, our capture range is going to be in focus. So that opens up your focus basically like distance. So F 2.8 would be a really shallow, small area to focus on. And F 8 is going to give it a wider focus area. So that'll be able to get everybody's faces in focus and you're going to be able to get a nice photo. So while using aperture priority, we're going to have it set in 11 and it's basically going to tell the camera where everything else should be set. So only thing it's not changing is ISO. So aperture priority is pretty good. If you're doing, um, let's say some portraits or something like that, you would want to keep your aperture at a constant and not change anything but the shutter speed and maybe the ISO, this is gonna be a good one to make sure everything is in 2.8. And if you wanted everything in F4, you can have every photo in F4 and then the camera is gonna do everything else around that. Um, aside from the ISO, because the ISO is kind of like one of those hybrid settings that you're gonna be changing a lot. So it doesn't necessarily use an auto setting unless you put it in the auto setting here on the Sony a7 II. So that's going to basically be aperture priority. That's going to be an actual good one. If I was to say um, I use any of the modes, aperture priority would probably be the one because if you're looking for shallow depth of field or no shallow depth of field, it's kind of a no brainer to just have the camera kind of set the shutter and then you set your ISO and then after that you know your constant is going to be that aperture around the board so you're going to be able to shoot really 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 crispy photos in f8 f5.6 4 r 2.8 when using this setting on the Sony a7 II. So our last but definitely not least setting is going to be programmable auto. Now this is going to be the one that you can basically I guess you can say you can change and set different auto aspects of the camera. So if I wanted my shutter, well, if I wanted my shutter to be auto, I can have it set to be auto as long as, as well as my aperture as well. And then I can also have my shutter speed be auto and my ISO to be auto. So this is kind of like a full auto mode. So say you don't necessarily understand aperture and shutter speed, you can have your aperture and shutter speed be auto and then you can change your ISO depending on what type of look you're looking for. So this one is actually not too bad if you you know think about it in the case scenarios that you might use it, but I don't necessarily use it because manual seems to be literally the solve all case to be able to put everything how you want it. And 
if I was to use programmable auto, it would probably be if I was trying to teach somebody, like in this case scenario here in the beginner's guide, I would say use programmable auto a lot because you can actually change or specify which part of the camera that you want to be automatic and actually manually change the other aspects of the camera to get what image you're looking for here on your Sony a7 II. Um, and it's going to be the same thing across, you know, the a7 III and a7 IV. Now, I will be coming out with an a7 IV beginner's guide for all the people who have one of those. That's what we're actually seeing the footage from today, which is my Sony a7 IV. Beautiful camera, shoots amazing video and photo. But that's going to be actually it for the Sony a7 II beginner's guide episode 6. We did go over the M, S, A, and P, and those are going to be your auto slash manual modes that you want to actually kind of get really good at using because they are very case scenario based. So that's going to actually be it. Hope you guys have been enjoying the videos. I'm sorry I went so inactive. You know, life takes its toll and I have a lot of things going on. Do have a special video coming up on some things that I will be bringing to the channel. And I do have uh, a couple of things that I want to bring to the channel as well. It's just been a lot going on. I am still here and there will be more Beginner's Guide episodes coming out. We will bring this bad baby all the way up to 10. And 10 will probably be our last episode before we move into doing a more, I guess you can say like intermediate kind of guide here for the Sony a7 II if you guys want to see that. Make sure you guys hit that like button and leave comments down below. Anyways, this has been your boy Christian. Hope you guys have been enjoying. And I'll see you guys on the next one.